You know, as golfers, I say in pretty much every video right now that we are spoiled for choice in every type of golf club that you could want to buy. It's available in the game improvement market in terms of irons. I don't think it's ever been more appealing. And you know, when you think about it, most of us are driven towards a certain type of iron because of a pigeonhole that we've been categorized in in terms of our handicap the two irons i'm going to look at today are suggested at the higher handicap as they are all out game improvement irons but for me the thing that has changed significantly within this genre in particular is be they have become more and more appealing for more and more golfers to play because all of the benefits that you get from these type of clubs are now packed into smaller profiles a lot easier on the eye sound and feel fantastic so what are the two irons we're going to look at in today's video well as the title suggests one is from Titleist and the other is from ping and they're gonna be extremely popular the g430 iron already is and i've got a feeling the t350 from Titleist just released is going to be equally as popular and they are after the same target group of golfers so what we're going to try and do in today's video is try and find out what separates these two what makes them different and what may, might make you buy one over the other now let's shove the price point to one side for now and you're going out and buying yourself a new set of irons then like i said g430 is a possibility t350 is also a possibility the first thing for me I'm going to walk into my retailer and I'm going to look down the line and I'm going to see two very, very different looking irons. Now, what I'd like to know from you is which one are you drawn to in terms of uh, shelf appeal, first of all. The G430 moved on from the 425 in a significant way in terms of looks. It's changed quite significantly and uh, more modern look, if you like, but still very much ping. Whereas the T350 is all out shiny chrome. It's going to attract the magpies. And for me, on a looks perspective alone, I would be certainly swayed towards that T350. But obviously that's very subjective. And I'd really like to know what you think of the difference between the two and which one you'd go for on a looks perspective, at least. And then the final thing we're going to talk about before we get on to the performance and how they separate is just how they look at, uh, well, a dress, I suppose, but that overall profile. They're quite different, you know, because the T350 has got quite a bit more bulk to it in terms of that top line, which surprised me, to be honest with you. I was expecting to see very much a similar look at a dress, but it is clearly the more visible game improvement iron, if you like, if you take that top line into account. But I wouldn't have recognized that sole width, probably wider on the ping, certainly down at that toe area. So that's a bit odd as well. But from the top line, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised at that. It's, uh, it's quite a bit bulky and hopefully you can see the same for you. But, you know, there's no saying that those kind of things are going to make any difference in the way you decide to purchase your clubs. I don't know, but for me, I'm, uh, I'm swayed in terms of shelf appeal towards a T350. Top line, maybe more so towards the ping. But what about in terms of performance? What do they do any difference? We've got Trapman hooked up and I'll go straight in. I'm going to hit the 350 to start. And I think that's a telling sign. I'm sort of, I'm enjoying this club right now. Now you'll hear from him, it's a really good strike by the way to start the session and um, you'll hear from certainly inside from an acoustics perspective I just want to make sure I wouldn't I, I'm on my own today not with Hannah and I wasn't sure that I'd actually press record yeah well good um, quite a clicky sound still very much different to the rest of the T uh, series lineup in my opinion but it is um, yeah, it sort of accentuated a little bit in terms of that sound inside. You can hear it again, quite a click off the face. Kind of what I would expect for this kind of iron. I think it's the kind of thing that realistically, I'm not sure it's gonna be a, play a major part in your decision making process if this is the club you're looking to buy. Now for me, I'd be looking at this, I'd be more than happy to stick this in. A seven iron we're in today, obviously. Always a seven iron. But for me, I'm thinking I'd be more than happy with this sort of a four and five iron in the bag, which I've not tried, but I'd love to see what they do. 
and it's just so easy swinging. Um, the ball just fires out there. I've had these in the initial review. I'm not expecting to see anything different. High launching ball, very, very playable, very, very easy to hit, very easy to get up in the air. Um, I'm going to switch straight into the ping. Now, I don't know whether anyone can notice, my, um, I lost my voice two days ago watching the Liverpool-Newcastle game and got a little bit excited with Darwin Nunez's goals um, and I'm still struggling a bit. That's not clever and anyway let's see what this does. So like I said a little bit more compact not as good of a swing there and now obviously to bear in mind in terms of dry ball data these have got different shafts in them uh, similar sort of weights but different shafts all the same I'll point that out before anybody asks the question um, but it's a very different sounding iron it's better and it's it's a weird one really for me because the G lineup of irons for years for me was so loud I didn't like the sound of them at all and I think there was a G430 across the board whether it was drivers fairway woods or irons they paid a lot of attention to the way they sound and feel and it was massively improved what you notice these are very very different and I said that you know for a lot of people it mightn't make any difference at all this feels still hard by comparison and that's a description that you know, I wouldn't be overly keen on um, neither of them like I said are exactly the way I'd like to or the sound I'd like to hear from an iron but as I said in terms of performance it's interesting the actual noise and what I'm seeing it feels like it's firing off faster off that T350. It seems to have a little bit more of a trampoline in effect, in my opinion, and we'll see the dry ball data at the end. But what I'm sort of seeing out here, now that could be just something that is to do with the difference in the sound. I mean, there's nothing wrong with these balls. They're, they're going down there. They're, as I've got a couple to the left, a couple straight, a couple right, that kind of thing. Everybody asks about dispersion. It's like, well, the golfer is all about the dispersion maybe not in sort of distance but certainly in that left and right dispersion and uh, yeah I don't think that really tells us a great deal right I think that's the last ball in terms of whilst we're talking on camera I'm just going to see what we did in terms of dry ball data may hit a few more balls but the big difference for me is the look at address and in performance wise what I'm seeing is that the uh, harder face in terms of sound prefer even though I'm not like loving a clicky sound off irons prefer what I'm in off the 350s and in terms of ball speeds what I'm looking at and launch angles is the 350 seems to be doing it a little bit easier than what I'm seeing in the ping so let's see if that is correct or not I'm going to walk over there and see what Trackman tells me. Now, perhaps one important point to mention that I had uh, overlooked in terms of that sound and feel element was there is, of course, a forged face on the T350. Not a forged body as such, but it is a forged face. And I just wonder how much difference that uh, is actually playing in the sound and feel difference between these two. Now, do you know what? I'm going to keep it very much short and sweet because these comparison videos head to heads, they're very much just a sort of pointer in the direction in terms of what I'm finding at least and I think you know these can drag on with no real need to so let's get straight into that data same as ever I'm going to throw the averages up on screen for you now in comparison then uh, the full data and I say full data only at five or six with each um, I'll put them up at the end if you want to sort of scrutinize um, let's go through that uh, comparison so T350 first of all um, 154 carry with uh, a 109 ball speed, peak height 82, 19 launch, 4.6 spin, 44.8 land angle. Um, I mean, I'm happy with all those numbers. Don't forget, there's a strong lofted game improvement iron. Spin is expected to be on the lower side. Um, I think that's more than well more than respectable certainly in my hands as well because I don't get a great deal of spin with any iron in hand. So them numbers are quite surprising in many ways um the launch angle and the peak height <coughs> excuse me 
is where I'd expect it to be, um, like I said, from what I've seen, which was launching high, peak height very high, and uh, the ball's still traveling. So yeah, everything in there is pretty decent. Then move over into that G430, um, 152 carry, uh, 108 ball speed, or 108.5. So ball speed and carry, not too much to separate them there. Peak height 73, that's the first noticeable difference. 17.3 launch angle, 4.694 spin, and that 42 degree land angle. So the differences come in terms of basically exactly what I was seeing hitting those balls while we were on camera. Launching lower, um, then we've got that sort of launch at that peak height rather, which is lower, which also has a knock-on effect on that land angle as well. And they're key parameters in this type of test for me and in this type of genre of club in particular because I feel like they're the areas that game improvement irons are really focused on right now and it's the type of help that uh, you and I need. So it's particularly slower swing speeds and I think we've kept this in around sort of 75, uh, 77 rather mile an hour in terms of that swing speed. So that's on the low side, but it's still producing, certainly in that T350, a high launching ball. So we're still able to, with low uh, swing speed, relatively low swing speed, we're still launching the ball high and that peak height and that's the kind of thing that like i said that we struggle with and at the aim at that's where the kind of real big differences between the two sets of clubs and for me that makes that kind of titleless t350 a clear winner just in that aspect alone a um, little bit surprised like i said um, of such a difference it'd be fair to ping to point out again like i said the difference in the shaft and that'll play a major part so maybe um, slightly different shaft is performing better for me in that T350, who knows. But that's what I found at least in this very short and brief head to head. I think that the important thing as ever is that you go out there, you try them for yourself, you make sure you get that right shaft in and uh, compare the two sets of numbers and all the other things in terms of price, looks and feel and all those bits as you would do anyway and you make your own decision from there. Right, I hope that was a help in some way, at least in pointing it in the right direction. That's a head-to-head -head T350 versus the G430. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you soon.